This we got for you. The wife of Senator Bernie Sanders facing bank fraud allegations. She calls this probe sexist. And here's what she has to say. I find it incredibly sexist that basically he, that's the prosecutor, he's going after my husband by destroying my reputation, and that's not okay. Joining us, Kristen Tate, author of the book, Government Gone Wild. Kristen, break this down for us and your reaction, please. I've just got to laugh at this, Stuart. You know, the sexism card is always the last refuge for liberals with no arguments. This is the same stuff that we've been hearing from Hillary Clinton and her people for months now, that she lost the election because she's a woman, not because she was a terrible candidate who couldn't connect with voters. But, you know, people can see right through this stuff. Jane Sanders is being accused of committing bank fraud by illegally obtaining a loan for a now former college in Burlington, Vermont. Now that she's being called out on it, she's crying racism. Well, guess what, Jane? There is no waiver for committing bank fraud because of your gender. Justice is blind. It doesn't know your gender. It does not know who you're married to. It doesn't know, you know, if you ran for president in the past. And it certainly does not give out waivers because you're a woman. We've got to hold our politicians to the same standards as the rest of us. And if Jane Sanders committed a crime, she's got to be held accountable for it. Well, Kristen, as a woman involved in politics, do you ever feel that you are treated in a sexist fashion because you are a woman? Absolutely not. If anything, I feel like I have an advantage because I'm a woman. Because of the media and this so-called feminist movement, there are so few women who have the courage to come out as a conservative. And the few of us who do, I think, have an advantage because there are you know, not as many of us saying the message, the conservative message, but there are a lot of women out there across the country who are conservatives, and they like hearing, you know, a conservative message from other females. It's empowering. The, but the, unfortunately, the, because of the media, we don't get enough of those voices. There's a lot being written about identity politics, about who you are as opposed to your, your policies that you would, you would suggest. Do you think that movement, mm -hmm. and we've, I think this has been the case for a generation, more and more stress on identity rather than policy. Do you think that trend has run its course at all? 2016 showed that identity politics are no longer effective. Hillary Clinton's main campaign issue was that she was a woman. And, and to campaign on that, to stand in front of women and act like the only issues we care about are women's issues like abortion, that is just demeaning. Women are like men, more or less. We care about the same issues. We care about government spending. We care about security for our families. We care about jobs and the economy. And to stand up there and pander to us as if we are a special, you know, a special uh, group of people, of victims, it's, it's just demeaning. And people see right through that stuff. Okay. So, no, identity politics is no longer effective. And 2016 proved that. All right. All right, Kristen, nicely wrapped it up there. But stay with us, please. I've got some more for you in just a moment.